Kyle Busch finally takes a shot at JGR after NASCAR win. The transfer of Kyle Busch to Richard Childress Racing has already produced positive results. Busch, who joined Childress in the offseason after working 15 years with Joe Gibbs Racing, won on Sunday at Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California in the number 8 Chevrolet. Given that it allowed Bush to leave the team after 15 successful years together, many people on social media had a field day mocking Joe Gibbs' team. Hello NASCAR fam and welcome back to NASCAR Live. But before we begin, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button and let's begin. He was able to accomplish additional goals thanks to the win. He has now won a Cup Series race for 19 straight seasons, one more than the previous record holder, Richard Petty. In addition, Kyle and Kurt Busch won the Cup Series for the 95th time, breaking the previous mark of Bobby and Donnie Allison for brothers. And in victory lane, Kyle received an embrace from his brother, Kurt. Quick, back on your brother, because if this reminded me of that emotion. He was emotional in victory lane. Yeah. And I loved watching him stand there waiting for you to drive it in. He was just like, okay, where, where is he? Where is he? That's cool. You guys have just, everything's just elevated over the last couple of months. Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, Kurt, he's obviously super resourceful. He's really a, a great teacher and probably helping the 2311 guys too much over there this day and age. But he's collecting a check, you know. You got you to gotta be paid somewhere somehow. So, um, you know, but it was really great to see him come over there and, and be a part of our victory lane celebration um you know we're now the winningest brother tandem out there in nascar which is super cool and um, that record stood for almost the test of time with the allison brothers but hopefully now the bush brothers have said it where it'll never be touched with a strong final 30 laps chase elliott came in second ross chastain and kevin harvick were the next two finishers the track was in excellent condition according to harvick i didn't really see weepers and it was just really dirty every run the second half of the race it cleaned up, but it was hard on the windshields. In the end, they did a great job of preparing the track and we were able to put on a good race. Workers began their shift on Sunday at 5.30 a.m. Air tundras, buffalo turbine blowers, jet dryers, and a sweeper truck were used as massive track drying equipment to stop tears from forming. Additionally, they carved out troughs in the track so that water could drain from the outside banks to the apron using hand saws and drills. At 12.30 p.m. on schedule, the Cup Series race began. Before the drop of the green flag, the drivers light up five wide for pace laps in front of an approximately 50,000-person sellout crowd, a spectacular sight aimed to thank the supporters who had supported the two-mile track when it first opened in 1997. The occasional weepers weren't the only issue as the track was fairly dry. By lap 40, the fronts of the cars had the appearance of having been sandblasted, and pit crews had to take extra care not to trip over debris that shook out of the grills during pit stops. The third driver to accomplish the feat was Harvick, who was making his 750th consecutive start in his final campaign as a Cup Series driver. He and Bush, who are tied for first place with Chastain among active drivers with a record 60 Cup Series victories, were in the lead with 62 laps remaining. Harvick was temporarily pushed back and Bush was delayed for a split second by an aggressive move by Chastain. Bush dropped to 8th place but quickly climbed back to 2nd while still closely trailing Chastain. The final victory on a track that is cherished by drivers was Bush's to keep. He said that there were a few instances when he let loose. You know, there were a couple moments where I got loose I about bust my ass on that last run so I was like please don't. Um, but, you know, fortunately was able to hang on well enough and tried to find another groove that my car would work better in. So it was just always a, a constant evolution of, of where you needed to be and, and um, you know, just trying to work. And that's what I enjoy most about this racetrack. I mean, it's a two mile racetrack. It's big. It gets spread out. But man, you can move around and you can spread out and you can make your you can make your own destiny by trying to find something else that'll help work for your race car. So, um, you know, uh, it's it's a. Sad day for me uh, to, to see this racetrack be in its last race being a two-mile configuration. So, um, you know, glad I was able to win the final one here. The goal is to upgrade the speedway and shorten the course from two miles to half a mile so that races appeal to a wider audience than just diehard NASCAR fans. However, NASCAR may scrap the project before ground is launched. The majority of the Auto Club Speedway land has been sold, according to NASCAR, so its business partner Hillwood, a Dallas-based corporation that assists NASCAR in selling assets across the country. 89 of the more than 500 acres will be kept by NASCAR, and the company says it will proceed with its plans to build the half-mile track. Caution flags were raised early on Sunday, almost as frequently as they would at a short track. 
several vehicles spun out into the infield on a restart bringing about the sixth caution. Going into the green flag, the leaders didn't pick up speed as quickly as anticipated, packing everyone behind them like an accordion. Eric Almarola, Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, and Ryan Priest were all forced to retire due to the biggest wreck to ever occur in an Auto Club Speedway Cup race. Almarola remarked, I think the leader is just playing games, trying to prevent the runs coming from behind, and they stopped in the middle of the restart zone, right about where they should have been accelerating. And he added, everybody just started stacking up and you couldn't stop on a dime. Bush avoided congestion and had nothing to do with the crash. Many people mistakenly believe that Bush's moniker, Rowdy, refers to his aggressiveness on the track and arrogant demeanor. Because Rowdy Burns was one of his favorite characters in Days of Thunder, he came up with the idea. By coincidence, the order to start the engines was given Sunday by actor Michael Rooker, who played the great driver Rowdy Burns in the film. On his victory lap, a driver performing a burnout three hours and eight minutes later provided the final memory on a legendary course. People cheered. Yes, the Rowdy Nation is expanding loud and proud, according to Bush. Yeah, it's, man, Rowdy Nation's growing, bro. Loud and proud. Watch out. We're going to take over. Um, so it's just fun to, uh, to see them and, and to give them something to cheer for again and to have an opportunity like today to win a race this early in the season, get everybody juked up and excited, and uh, also continue to hopefully you know, have more races like this uh, where we're able to win, get some of those playoff points, kind of um, stockpiling a little bit so we can have a, a, a good time at the end of the year. Bush asked Dave Allen, the president of the Speedway, for a piece of the track after it will be torn out. I thought it was really special when Bristol uh, dug up their racetrack, was that 2007, going into eight, I think. Um, maybe it was later than that. Anyway, they made these blocks and sent it to all the drivers of, you know, it was the last race on that concrete surface or whatever. And so I always just kind of thought, you know, if we don't, if they dig up racetracks or whatever, it'd be cool to have some of those pieces, especially, you know, if you've won at that place or as special as this place has been to me with five wins here, you know, it would be uh, pretty meaningful. And winning the last one was, uh, was super meaningful to me. So I would cherish having one of those. Um, you know, it, it's not all that glamorous or cool looking. It's a piece of asphalt, but you know, it, it's still a, a memory in which, um, I have from, from being here, and the team would love to have a piece of that too for being the last win here. And now let's take a recap at what happened during the race at Auto Club Speedway this season. After winning the Daytona 500, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. joined Christopher Bell on the front row for the start of the race on Sunday. Stenhouse and Cody Ware, who also started in the front, quickly dropped like stones from their starting positions, while Bell took the lead on the opening lap. On lap two, the winner of the 2020 Fontana race, Alex Bowman, quickly assumed the lead. The first 10 laps went by quickly as Joey Logano and Ross Chastain started to reel in Bowman for the lead. On lap 12, Kyle Larson, who was currently ranked 7th, stopped on pit road with what seemed to be an electrical or engine problem. Martin Truex Jr. received a pit road penalty for an uncontrolled tire which, together with crew members and equipment for servicing, is prohibited from interfering with or impeding upon the pit stop of another team. On lap 21, Chastain was leading and the green flag was once again out. Brad Kozolowski spun out of turn two after making contact with Corey LaJoy and the caution was displayed. With 10 laps remaining in stage one, Chastain was still in the lead. Chastain won the first stage, followed by Blaney in second, Daniel Suarez in third, Bowman in fourth, and Denny Hamlin in fifth. Stage two's backstretch saw a significant collision that prompted yet another caution. The worst of it happened to A.J. Almendinger, who had to abandon his race. In stage two, the caution was brought out once more as LaJoy was tagged by Tyler Reddick. On lap 87, the green flag was back out, but it didn't last long. The yellow flag was promptly brought back out after the big 10-car collision involving Kozolowski, Blaney, Bell, Reddick, Ware, Eric Almarola, Justin Haley, Todd Gilliland, Ryan Priest, and Ty Dillon. Following the crash, Bell, Reddick, Almarola, and Priest were the four drivers that were unable to proceed. Reddick finished dead last for the second time in his first two races with 23-11 racing. The collision was the biggest in Auto Club Speedway history. To win Stage 2, Chastain pulled away from the pack and extended his advantage to six seconds. Bush, Logano, Harvick, and Suarez rounded out the top five finishers. A three-wide struggle between Logano, Suarez, and Chase Elliott developed as the third and final stage began. 
With 20 laps remaining, Bush took the lead from his starting position of 21st. With fewer than 10 laps remaining, Elliott was fighting Bush for the lead, but in the end, it was Kyle Busch who prevailed. Meanwhile, March 5th marks the return of NASCAR to Las Vegas Motor Speedway as the West Coast Swing picks up speed. On the 2023 NASCAR schedule, Las Vegas will serve as the location for the second leg of the West Coast Swing. Kyle Busch, who is returning home, has the momentum going for him going into the weekend. With victory at Fontana, the Richard Childress Racing driver has now marked his 61st career triumph. Bush has had great success at his home track, despite only having one victory there in 23 Career Cup starts. He has three pole positions, 11 top five finishes, and has led 311 laps. So why do only the best win there? Last year, Alex Bowman's victory in the Las Vegas Spring Race was undoubtedly the highlight of his campaign. In that race, which was his only victory of the year, the Hendrick Motorsports driver only led 16 laps. In fact, Bowman finished in the top five just three more times in 33 races that year. Vegas will always hold special memories for Joey Logano because he won the playoff race there the previous year. With his victory, he and Team Penske were guaranteed a berth in the championship round, providing them a significant edge over the next three weeks, which ultimately led to his second championship. Kevin Harvick and Martin Truex Jr. each had two victories at Las Vegas, compared to three victories apiece for Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski. And that ends today's episode, friends. We sincerely hope you enjoyed our video. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.